he knew about God and what he believed about God totally changed what he did that day. So as we face temptation, as we face any persecution, as we face situations that we don't know how that outcome is going to come about, when we start to doubt whether or not we can accomplish something, let's think of David. Who should I fear? I would say for us who are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, those of us who have been given the gift of his Holy Spirit, who know God and know our salvation way more than David could ever have imagined, we ought to have no fear. We ought to be fearless because we're protected as well. He then goes on and says this, Psalm 27, second half of verse 1. He says, the Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Second question, whom shall I dread? He says, when evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, I don't know if he's thinking about Goliath there. He says, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell, though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The second question says, whom shall I dread? Dread is this idea of a great anticipation uh, to anticipate with great apprehension or fear. Okay, so fear is like in the moment. I see this and oh no, I was afraid because of something that happened, but dread is gonna be this heightened sense of fear that now starts to affect how I walk into a situation before it's even scary. When you dread going in, I'm dreading taking this test. Well, it can ruin this fourth period and the whole first three periods of the day. Why? Because I dread it. He says, not only am I going to be afraid when I see somebody and haven't lined up, I'm also not going to allow that idea of fear to control what's going on in my life. See, fear affects the moment, but dread affects how we approach the future. And many times that can cause it to affect every aspect of our life. David says, I'm protected by God, and I'm not going to walk through life with dread. It leads to worry. It leads to anxiety, concern, this idea of foreboding that this world is going to come out and it's going to get me, and at the end I'm going to end up losing or some, something bad is going to happen to me, and you have this constant dread of what's going on. And if we understand that God is our rock, that he's our stronghold, that he is our fortress, then we don't give in to this idea of dread because in every situation God will deliver us. David says, who should I dread? The Lord is the defense of my life. He's my protector. God keeps me away from dread. In life, others will fail. Others will come and try to get us. Ultimately, I think this was probably in David's mind as well as he went into battles that he couldn't be totally sure of the outcome. He was going into battle that day and there was times that he said, okay, today, maybe today's gonna be the end of my life. But when God is our protector, really all they can do is they can kill me. They can't defeat me. All they can do is take my life now, but I still am going to win. I'm going into this battle, and I'm fearless, and I'm not dealt with dread because death isn't the end of me. Why should I fear someone who can only take away my soul, only take away my physical body? I'm only going to fear someone who has control of my soul. I'm going to give respect to the one, to God, who has control of my eternal soul. But David knows that he's winning in that situation. And he says, I'm not going to dread anyone. Well, what are, the, what are the results? Verse 3 he says, Though war rise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. What's his statement? I'm protected. I have a great protector. I have a great rock. I have a great stronghold. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to dread. You know what I'm going to be? I'm going to be confident because of who my God is. In spite of whatever I'm going to face, whatever war I'm going to look at, I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be self-assured. And probably it's probably not the best way to describe it. He's not self-assured. He is assured at what God is going to do with him and for him in life. God is on my side. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take comfort in his protection. I'm going to have faith in that. I'm going to expect his salvation. I'm going to trust his presence. I'm going to be confident in life instead of fear. And look at the differences. Who should I fear? Who should I dread? You see somebody who's afraid, who's hesitating, who's doubting and doesn't know. You see somebody who's full of dread, who is worried about tomorrow, constant anxiety, have no idea, and expecting the worst of what's going to happen. And then you have that in contrast to someone who says, I'm going to take confidence in who God is. That's how we face a giant. That's how we defeat our problems. That's how we take on temptation. 
That's how we face a world that's against us in many ways with confidence. Why? Because we are protected by God. We then close with his one request. Verse 4 says, One thing I've asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to meditate in his temple, for he will hide me in the shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Here we see David's request. What does he want? I just want to be in the presence of God on a daily basis. I want to be there in his presence. I want to meditate on his word. I want him to really, his light to shine upon my life. I want to understand that he's right there with me. I want to behold the beauty of his Lord. I want to meditate and help his, who he is, fill my mind and control my thoughts. I want to trust him to hide me in the shelter. When trouble comes, he's going to be there. I know that he'll conceal me under the cover of his tent. He's going to put me upon that rock. And what does he want to do? He wants to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And when he talks about the Lord as my shepherd, what does he have confidence is going to happen? I get to be in his presence. And he makes that request one more time. I want to be in the God's presence on a daily basis. Uh, that's the constant that he wants while life is going well and good or bad, if he's a teenager or if he's at the end of his life as a 70-year-old man. He wants to walk into the presence of God. David Guzik made this statement on that. He says, there's a richness in God revealed to the seeking heart that many people never know. When I read what David's doing, there's a lot of things about this idea of seeking him, of understanding who he is, and I think many of that can only happen through the experiences that David had. You know, we, aren't, we don't see the physical Goliath and then have that victory. There are so many victories and so many times of deliverance that he experienced that enabled him to have something that's so much more. But he also says this, he says, it's a shame that David knew under the old covenant and so many of us with a greater covenant and greater promises never fully understand it. David was going one day at a time saying, I'm protected by God, I'm trusting him, I'm going to walk fearlessly, I'm going to walk without dread, I'm going to face this day confidently, and he didn't have half the picture we have of our God. We get to come and study people like David and see what God does with his life. We get to see the loving grace and forgiveness of a father who sees how far we can fall and but when we respond in the right way says that's still a person after my own heart he made mistakes but he got back up he failed he failed me greatly there was great consequences for that but he always came back and wanted to be in my light david understood these things and took them into his heart we of all people should be able to drink even deeper into who our god is but we have to stop and we have to look for it. We have to let it be seen. We have to give it our time and our hearts and our thoughts. In his presence, I have shelter. I have concealment. I have the high ground. He is my protector. Uh, let these thoughts be lived out in our lives this week. Lord's invitation is always open. We always want to encourage you in whatever way. Uh, sometimes it takes courage to come and make it known that I don't want to do things differently. David was willing to do that. When David was told, you are the man, you have failed God in what he wants, he said, oh, that was me. He would come forward. He would want to come into the presence of God. He said, bless, bless me, wash me, purge me, help me to be whiter than snow. God, against you and you only have I sinned, and I want you to come and restore to me the joy of my salvation. That's what David would do when he found himself opposite of what God wants. He set a perfect example for us to say, look, when we fall down, God's not worried about our fall. He's worried about what are we going to do when we get up. And maybe that's where you are this morning. We want to encourage you. We want to pray with you. We want to help you. But we can't help you if you don't let us know. Maybe you need more than just your own personal prayers. You want your brothers and sisters to pray with you. We want to do that. Maybe you're ready tonight to walk with God who will give you a victory. If you're ready to become a Christian, we want to help you with that as well. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to come as we stand and as we sing.